so glad that you decided to join us today as we gather together for worship. You know, it's pretty amazing that people can be watching from anywhere in the world, different time zones, but we're so happy that you are here with us today. We're excited. We believe that God is going to meet with us today in a very personal way. You know, as a way of connecting, uh, it would be so cool if you could share where you're watching from. And even better yet, share a testimony, share a praise report about how God has encouraged you. And you know, we want to continue to encourage you to invite others to follow and to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kakaka Christian Fellowship, and also encourage you to continue to visit our website, kcfhawaii.org for the latest updates. And again, the easiest way to uh, tune into our services is to go ahead and just click on that watch button. You know, as we continue to connect, uh, let's go ahead and see how some of you are doing in our weekly check-in videos. Hi everyone, this is Auntie Hazel. How are you all doing? My favorite verse is, God said, I will not put any disease upon you like he did the Egyptian, for I follow your command and your decrees. Okay, bye-bye, thank you, take care. Hi, KCS. We're the Kawaguchis. We miss seeing you. Here's some of the things we've been doing the last few months. Choo-choo! being able to go through the psalms together as a family. We've grown closer to God and to each other over the last 57 psalms. We'd like to leave you with a verse from Psalm 46. God, God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Thank you families for those awesome check-in videos. We are so blessed, we're encouraged to see that God is doing some amazing things. You know, as we turn our focus today to worship, I was reminded of a verse in Psalm 121, 2, that says, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And yes, that's the truth, that God has made all things, that He sustains all things, and that He holds us. And, and that's such an encouragement. Um, you know, as we prepare our hearts for worship, uh, we are so blessed to have back with us again Corey and Loki Oliveris as they lead us into God's presence. So let's go ahead and open up our hearts. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and let's worship the Lord with all that we have this morning. Amen. Hey, aloha. Good morning. KCF Ohana. Corey and Loki here with you again. Mahalo to Pastor Mark for um, having us again uh, to lead worship. We want to just uh, open this time in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. And this morning, we lift up all the praises to you. For you are good. You are awesome. And we just love you, Lord. We pray this all in your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. God, in you I put my trust. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. find my peace in you in you I find my strength in you I live and move and breathe let everything I say and do be founded by my faith in you 
lift up holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my hands. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my feet. God, to you I give my everything. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my life. In you, in you I find my peace. In you, in you I find my strength. Seen do be found about my faith in you. Lift up holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. In you, in you, in you, I find my peace. In you, in you, I find my strength. Everything I see and do, be found by my faith in you. Lift up holy hands and sing. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. God, 
also find victory. You know, I think about the story in 2 Chronicles where Jehoshaphat was faced with a big war. You know, the people were coming at him and he just had to seek out counsel in that time because he was ruler and although he had all this wisdom and authority, he still had to find godly counsel. And sometimes I feel like um, we're, we're always looking for answers, you know, in maybe people, maybe we're looking for answers in things, but God is really the answer. He is the only one who can answer whatever it is that we're dealing with. And he always has the victory because he's God. And so I want to read out of 2 Chronicles, the 21st chapter. And this is speaking of Jehoshaphat. He said, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, And we're saying, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And I want to stop there. I kind of want to just think about what is it that we're facing today that's really keeping us from moving forward? And what do we need to do? What are those action steps that we need to take? And I feel like God is saying we need to worship. To worship him in spirit and in truth. That he has the victory already. That Jesus has already gone before us. That he has already been victorious. And so as we lean in, as we worship, as we sing this next song, let us already imagine that the victory has already been won. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see you victory. I'm gonna see you victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see you victory. I'm gonna 
see you victory for the battle belongs to you lord oh yes lord and you have won the battle we proclaim our victory in you jesus there's power in the mighty name of jesus Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see you victory. I'm going to see you. a brand new song that we're introducing this weekend. See the victory. It's such a powerful song, a powerful pro proclamation. Let's sing this section again together. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. He yes, works Lord. all things for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. He gives beauty for ashes. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm going to see you victory. I'm going to see you victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see you victory. 
I'm gonna see your victory. Yes, Lord, we declare victory. For in the Jesus. battle belongs to you, Lord. For the weapons of our warfare are not oh, carnal, but mighty of God. For the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Thank you for thank fighting you, Lord. for us. Thank you, Lord, for the victory in Jesus. Yes. Jesus, it is finished, you said. It is done. It is power. So we put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. As we continue on into the week, Lord, we draw near to you in all that we say and do. We want to be worshiped unto you, God. So we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your orders of the N1000. It's been very robust sales. <laughs> no, just kidding. You know, we're in day 97 of the stay-at-home orders. Governor Ige, and I think I'm excited to, to invite you today to the Oyatamari Chan Ohana here in beautiful Aina Haina, and behind me is Wailupi Stream. And I thought it was an appropriate location to really illustrate something that Jesus talked about in a parable that's quite famous. I know many of us have already heard so many times. I think it's very relevant for what's happening right now. And that is the parable of the sower. It's a parable about where are you? When you're at stay at home, physically, you're at home. But spiritually, where are you? This is a once in a generation opportunity to assess where you are spiritually. So I'm excited today to bring you to Wailupi Stream where Jesus talks about four different types of soil. It's the different, type, it's the different types of soil that really matter in terms of what the Word of God is able to do in your life. So would you come with me? Well, let's check it out. Come, follow me. So in the parable of the sower, in Luke chapter 8, verses 5 through 15, Jesus talks about four different types of soil. Where the farmer scatters the seed and it lands on one type of soil that is on a path. Birds come and eat it up. Second type of soil is like on rocky ground where it's unable to grow deep roots and when the trials and tests come of the world, it withers away. Still, there's third type, which goes into a thicket of thorns, where it grows, but eventually gets choked out. But then there's a fourth type of soil, which is good soil, where crop is grown and grown a hundred times fold of what was sown. Let's check this out. Luke chapter 8. Verse 4, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, 
so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. In verse 11, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. And what you have here, if you take a close look, is actually we cut a stalk of red tea leaf plant several weeks ago. And we put it, buried it horizontally in the ground. And because of there's good soil here, it's actually growing pretty well. And we're very excited to see what's going to happen to this new tea leaf plant, new beginnings as a result. So today, I want to ask you to look at where are you spiritually today? And next, whether, you're, whether you are on the path that is easily trampled on, or the Word of God can be snatched away from the enemy, maybe you're on rocky ground where it's unable to grow root and it withers away when there's trials and tests in life. Maybe you're on ground that is growing with the, the, the worries, especially now in this time of day, or the riches and the pleasures of the world. And then eventually the Word of God gets choked up, or choked off, I should say. How do we get ourselves on good soil? And I wanted to leave you with two hows. How do we get ourselves then on good soil? For us, us personally, there's two verses that really our family leans on, especially in times like this. And the first one comes from Ephesians 6. And in Ephesians 6, it really focuses on what is called the full armor of God. In verses 10 through 17, and I won't re read all of it right now, but essentially there's six pieces of the armor of God. First is the helmet of salvation, to know that your belief and faith in Jesus Christ as the one who has died for us, you can hold true in that. The second is the breastplate of righteousness, which essentially means to always be doing the right things. There's also the shield of faith, where know that with God, you can have faith that he will protect you from the enemy and anything that life throws at you. There's also the belt of truth that can be no more relevant than right now, especially with social media. And there's all of these concepts and anybody can spout off what they say is true when really there is only one truth there's the sandals of the preparation of the gospel where you can stand firm on the gospel of peace, knowing what is true. And finally, and actually an offensive weapon is the sword that is the word of God that makes sure that the word grows onto good soil that is not snatched away by the enemy, that is not withered away on rocky ground and it does not get choked off by thorns of the world. The Word of God and the Bible is our sword. The second verse I'll leave you with that also helps our family is something that I've been pouring into these last several weeks every single day, making sure that I try to grow a good and noble heart day by day. And I was telling Pastor Mark that for me, where I am and many of you know, starting a new business, it's really been a faith that gets renewed day by day. And that passage that really represents this for me, and I want to share with you guys, is Psalm chapter 25, verses 1 through 5. And this is one where in humility we earnestly seek the Lord's best for us. 
And it basically goes like, like this. It says, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. In you, I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in the Lord will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. That's in Psalm 25, 1 through 5, and it's really been my personal prayer every day. And it's something that encourages me and teaches me how to grow a good and noble heart. And the full armor of God is something that we, Tammy and I, would pray with Josh every day when one of us is dropping him off at school. That's actually the prayer we have. And it's Josh who prays that every single day. And we pray for him. That armor of God would protect him, but also the sword would be an offensive weapon. And God would use him as salt and light to where he's been placed in his school. So I hope all of these would be an encouragement to you in the how, but also importantly, that it starts with the parable of the sower and assessing where are you? Where is your life? How is the Word of God able to seep into your life and grow a hundred times fruitful? Are you on the path unprotected where it can be easily trampled on or the birds can steal it, which is really represents the enemy being vulnerable to the enemy? Are we vulnerable? Are we guarding and are we protecting the Word of God? Or maybe we put our faith in rocky ground. We think it's solid, but then we realize root does not grow deep where it's rocky and there's no moisture. What are we placing our faith in? And where does the Word of God fit into that? Or maybe we grow with the world. Maybe our worries force us to depend on ourselves and then we pursue the riches and the pleasures of this world to a point that we might grow but we don't mature because it gets choked off by the things of this world. But it's those of us who can hold tightly to things like Psalm 25, Ephesians 6 and really grow deep in a good and noble heart. So that's my prayer for you today. And I really, really would like to encourage all of you to look those up and I hope that that would be something that would really bring blessing upon you and your family. Let me pray for you today. <clears throat> Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for the parable of the sower. God, I know that you made it, it was so important that you recorded it in three different books of the Gospels. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke. Today, God, we, we looked at Luke chapter 8, and thank you, Jesus, for explaining that to the disciples and so that we could also understand what you meant by that. God, I think for all of us today that are in stay-at-home orders, that it's hard. Not only physically, psychologically, mentally hard, emotionally hard, but I think it's a time for us to also assess spiritually where are we today too, Lord? And would you, would you reveal to us and every single person who's listening today to assess a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to assess right now where are we spiritually? How are we able to receive your word? Are we guarding it? Are we letting it be trampled upon and easy to be stolen? Are we trusting in a rocky ground and we realize too late that it can't grow root? Or maybe we're, we're putting our trust in the world only later to find that we can't mature because we'll get choked off by the worries and the riches and the pleasures. Would you, Lord, for everyone listening today, grow in them good soil of a good and noble heart. And we trust in you and are hoping you 
every day, as we say in Psalm 25, 1 through 5. And we wear the armor of God in Ephesians 6. God bless. Amen. So to close out our time today, I just wanted to leave you with two things. First, bless a business. Can you guess how many businesses are now on our site? 15. But that's awesome. And I especially want to do a shout out to Michelle Funai, who accounted for, I think, over half of those 15. But wouldn't it be awesome if every single family listening to me today made a commitment to adopt one business? It could be one that's currently on the site, or maybe it's a favorite place that you frequent today. The key is there are so many business owners that are out there today who are having a really challenging time making a go. What better time than now to be the church, to go out there and bless a business owner. So would you pray about it together as a family? Adopt one of the businesses, one of those 15. And if not those, pick one in your local neighborhood, one that you frequent, that you've maybe thought about, said hi to the owner. I would really encourage you as a family to do this. And if you're wondering, what do I say? What kind of, what, how do I approach them? I have a document. You can just email me and I'm happy to send it to you. And it will get you on your way. I know of at least one other person who's doing just that today with her family. And I'm excited to see that business owner highlighted on our site. So would you do that? Go on to KCFY, our website. Go click on bless. You can see the whole list there. Do your part, just however small things, with great love. And the second thing is, please don't forget, there's also a place on the website, KCF Hawaii, to also click on give. And that's the way today we are going about and doing our tithes and offerings. It's very easy. You can do it online. Automatic debit out of your bank account card. If you're old school, no worries. You can always mail in a check to the church office. So have a blessed week. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next week. We're going to have a lot more to share with you. And I just pray that you meditate. Where are you spiritually? And second, how? Can you look at Ephesians 6, Psalm 25 as a family, focus on those things, and then go take some action. Bless a business, adopt a business, and don't forget to give. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you.